is normality? This particular question has been repeated over the last few years with a number of definitions. The most common one is to classify someone as ordinary. To break it down to more detail, it basically means someone who is the same as someone else. However, if you meet someone who uses crutches or is in a wheelchair or has another obvious disability, how would you classify them? There are over 10 million disabled people in Britain. The law describes a person with a disability as having a physical or mental impairment which has a substantial and long-term ad adverse effect upon their ability to carry out normal day-to-day -day activities. Often disabled people are classified as not normal and they are treated differently. One particular case was when the work of pension secretary of the United Kingdom, Ian Duncan Smith, was criticised for calling non-disabled people normal. Disabled and non-disabled people were quick to react, saying that it was wrong to imply that disabled people were not normal. This has opened up the conversation about what normality is and whether it should be used to describe disabled people. To understand the meaning of the word normal, we would have to go back to the roots of where it first began. It comes from the Latin word normalis, meaning a right angle corresponding to a set square or a carpenter's tool, but in the 16th century it evolved to mean ordinary. To this very day, people have tried their best to live up to the standards of what they call normality. And one big example of this is world media. People like Kim Kardashian and Zac Efron have made themselves eye-catching by strutting around in stylish clothes and having flawless bodies, and the average person wants to be just like media figures because they consider them to be normal. There, there have been lots of theories about how normality is, and I think that one particular theory stands out from the rest. This is the theory that was submitted by a wheelchair user, Mick Scarlett. He says that the term normal just shouldn't exist anymore, because I don't think anybody can really define what it is. If we can get past this idea of normal, then we can be truly equal, and nobody would need to be described as such. In conclusion, disabled people are just the same as everyone else, and they can be treated with special attention, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be cast away from society. As a disabled person living with cerebral palsy, I feel quite strong with this topic. I agree with Mick Scarlett's statement because I myself do not know what normality is, and I hope that one day we can all come to realise that the idea of normality should not exist at all. Effects of academic pressure Many teens across the globe have different amounts of pressure forced upon them from a variety of different places in their academics. However, would these all be beneficial for the child or does it have a more negative impact on the child's future success and development after finishing their studies which counteract the good ones? First, we should address what future success is. Would it be to have large sums of money sitting and waiting for you to use in the bank or simply to have eternal happiness and acceptance? Or are these both the same? Success is not something that can be simply measured, as there is no true definition and is rather a definition which varies greatly amongst different people of social and cultural groups. However, in careers, reaching the top of a business or company would most likely be seen as highly successful in work proportion after school. Generally, there is no exact or right amount of pressure a child should receive from someone during their schooling lives. This is due to large variables within each teen's upbringing along with personal traits that would change and affect how a child should be treated. School is set up in order for students to achieve a high ability and competence in the key subjects, reading, spelling, English, and maths, in order to be able to achieve goals and achievements and continuously stay happy during school. However, having large masses of pressure upon an individual teen can possibly be counterproductive which can consequently induce a rebellious attitude towards superiors or other higher powers. Branding by one test at the end of a schooling life can produce huge stress on a child, so why wouldn't you simply just drop out of school and avoid the stress completely? Working at McDonald's surely isn't that bad. The stress in the UK alone causes one-fifth of teens to leave school before A-level qualifications at the age of 16. However, is this due to pressure or a merely disinterest? Psychologically, it is most likely due to stress as A-levels are a stressful period and students would rather avoid the difficulty which it entails. The needs for oneself to be perfect, a pressure we put upon ourselves. 
Everyone would strive for perfection and many students would take it to the extreme. Aims to achieve perfect grades, perfect friends and a perfect household. They will control everything in their lives to be their idea of perfect. Fostering this obsession to the per be the perfect child for their parents or their friends. To be accepted and approved by everyone. Some may try to balance their worries over or for grade, sport, social approval, competition or a tough workload. Students would constantly compete with each other and strive for this so-called perfection, sugarcoating whatever they did to get there. As a product of this competitiveness, the loss of friendship and support, along with other negative consequences, the individual wouldn't see at the time due to their short-sightedness. Students from different cultural backgrounds have different amounts of pressure applied to them from their parents. For instance, Chinese parents have been shown to put pressure on their children from a young age in Huang Shishi, 1992, only 4% of the 200 million students who were studying would get a chance to have a higher education, thus inducing the amount of pressure and expectation a parent would put upon a child. Every parent's reasoning to why the pressure was applied would vary due to them either wanting to be accepted by their group of friends, by their bragging or boasting about one's child's success, or at a more selfless note, the hope to prevent the disappointment or feelings of failure as the result of rejection from a college due to their previous bad grades. Majority of parents wouldn't realize the repercussions of their actions and may not see their child burning out before it's too late. The excessive amount of parental pressure can cause a collapse on students both mentally and physically, prompting negative consequences which include eating disorders, excessive anxiety, cheating, loss of interest in life or hobbies, social withdrawal and sleep deprivation. This stress and anxiety, in turn, would produce overwhelming circumstances leading to physical pains of stomach aches, diarrhea, headaches, and in some younger children, nightmares or evasion of school. Yet to the previous extreme, there is an opposite regarding the lack of pressure, which affects the child's well-being negatively also. As the absence of any pressure would result in lack of motivation or rebellious acts, as they do not believe their parents appreciate them or they are not important enough for the parents to focus on them. Thus, the need for attention would grow stronger and acts of rebel would increase to gain notice from the uncaring guardians. This would eventually lead to similar conclusions to excessive pressure applied to a child. Influences from friends would show certain amounts of pressure as the thought of being seen uncool and exclusion would cause students to change their grades in order to fit to their group set standards. This can cause both negative and positive impacts as a child would surround themselves with different social standards of academics. Therefore, the student would surround them, who would surround themselves with the smarter group would most likely have higher pressure to achieve similar grades to their friends, thus gaining the acceptance of their fellow pupils. Although if one surrounded by peers who do not see grade as important and would judge those negatively who achieved high grades, the student would show a decrease as they attempt to gain social approval. Pressure has a major impact on academic success. The pressure can come from anywhere and when pushed too far, a teen can react in spontaneous manners. But is this really what a student needs to achieve their goals or will it just result in major burnout or devastation?